let's write down a typical particle physics reaction. Let's consider a neutron that becomes a proton plus an electron and a anti-neutrino of the electron. This is a beta decay, a beta minus decay. Neutrons and protons are made of quarks. A neutron has one up quark and two down quarks, and a proton two up quarks and one down quark. So if we want, we can rewrite this uh, reaction using the elementary particles. So we've got a down becoming an up plus an electron and a not neutrino of the electron. Good. So this reaction tells us that we started with a down quark and we end up with an up quark, an electron, and an antineutrino of the electron. But it doesn't give us any information about the processes which are going on and that lead to this transformation. That is where Feynman diagrams come in. Feynman diagrams are a graphical representation of the processes that undergo particles when they react and transform. You can also write the interactions between particles mathematically, and from there predict what would be the most probable outcome. But the mathematics you need are way beyond the capabilities of high school students, and to be honest, even of their teachers. And that is where Feynman diagrams really help. They show you a simple way to represent the processes which are ongoing in a particle physics reaction. Let's consider this beta decay. I will draw the Feynman diagram for you. Oh, sorry, no. Here you go. What do we see here? We see a down quark that transforms into an up quark while it spits a W minus boson. A W minus boson is a boson of the weak force. So we know now that it is a weak force which is involved. But a W boson is very heavy, so it is also very unstable and soon decays into an electron and an antineutrino. A Feynman representation is a graphical representation, so we need some axes. From left to right, the axis is time. This shows the flow of time. And on the vertical side, we have space. Yeah, all space is represented as one dimension. So you can see this, if you want, as the magnitude of the displacement. Good. What else? Oh, well, there's the symbols. You see the down, up, and electrons that's represented by a bar with a narrow towards the direction of time. While the antiparticle, the antineutrino, is the same as a bar, but with a narrow in the other direction. The W minus boson, the boson of the weak force, is represented by a dashed line. The photon for the electromagnetic force and the gluon for the strong force also have their own symbols. We'll talk about it a bit later in the video. And finally, really important, the vertices. The vertices has a junction between the symbols. Actually, you can see them like the place where you have the reaction going on. For example, the down becomes an up and spits a W boson at this point. Or the W boson spits out an electron and an antineutrino at this point. It's kind of the place where there's a mini reaction going on. It's one vertex, two vertices. So one vertex can be a reactant giving you two products, or two reactants that become a product. There's always three symbols attached. The reaction going on at vertices follow the rules of conservation of quantum numbers. So I discussed these in a previous video. If you haven't seen it yet, well, you can go and have a look, but don't worry too much if you feel like continuing, because even though I will discuss vertices and I apply these rules, I will explain them on the way. So you'll be able to hop on the train.